Mr. Demaray, I think uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, let's see. I see that uh, Daphne has sent us a new memo. Okay. Great. If everyone has an opportunity, just pull that up in their emails. Uh, We'll just take a minute to look at it. So, Mr. Demaray, when you wrote that last sentence or you kept it in, provide you with related policy language if requested, what kind of request were you anticipating? Just a request for statutory language. I wonder if that makes sense to, to, say, to say that. Um, committee, impressions on, on where this is at at this point. I stopped at mini grants. I, I had a question earlier and I forgot to ask it about whether we just call it grants or mini grants. Mini sounds tiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I don't know if there if it if it's a word actually, but I looked at Senator Perslick and Senator Hooker. There maybe we just change it to grants or block grants. I think one of the, the goals was to say that it's just a, a set amount that's kind of formulaic, not. I'd probably use like a categorical aid instead of mini grants, but it's it's semantics. I don't know how much it matters for a letter. Oh, right, right, right. But it could well, just grants is fine. Grants works. I think grants okay. is better than mini grants. Okay, grants it is. And I did did have a conversation on on the break. If you don't mind, Thank on you. It, please that. The, like um, as Kenny just said, it gets it's more complicated when you look into it. Is like the, the the different levels of EL EL instruction really depends on the needs of the child, which obviously makes sense. That if you're if you have never spoken English before, you need a lot more attention than if you just like you speak English but your family doesn't. So things like that. So whether it's a part time aid or a full-time teacher and cultural liaisons and, uh, and counselors is really changed. So it's not like an automatic number. Like if you have a few students, it's, this is what you need. And if you have more students, since, since the, the disparity of need is so great, but that said, just given a, given the need to pick a number, it seemed like under five was, was a number that, that seemed like with, 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 with five students that don't have too great a need that maybe in these rural areas, you would, you would come across that the $25,000 makes sense for that range. And then after five, you would jump up to the 50,000. But it's an imperfect, anywhere you draw the line, it's gonna change, but so I, I guess that's kind of my suggestion to say one to five, ELL students be $25,000, but if you have five to 25, then you have $50,000. Senator Chittenden. I, I thought I recall on, you would know this better, Senator Perchlick or Senator Hooker, but there was some distinction not on a uh, number of ELLs per school district, but in per school. So if a school district has multiple schools and there's ELL students there and there, then that that might be the factor to raise it to 50,000. Is, is that ringing any bells? Yeah, and I, I think of it that because it's the school district that hires the staff. So in this says uh, school districts, even though if I've been saying schools, I often get the two confused, but yeah. Assuming they're close by, although some school districts have some schools quite far away, but 
I think it might be hard for some of the rural schools that have five ELL students to find an ELL instructor in that in their area. So they might have to travel and share with other schools and other districts. I think what you're what you're I think so this is my what I'm thinking of the path forward. We would put it on the calendar just so everyone knows that we would vote on it on Tuesday just to announce, you know, to, to those watching. Uh, Senator, uh, I'll call Senator Cummings. I think we're still more than fine with timing actually, but uh, and that also gives us a little more time to, to think about this. Uh, Senator Lyons. Uh, I'm just going back to the last sentence again. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, no, it's. So I like ending the sentence at discuss it with you. And then I'm trying to figure out what policy language we're going to give to finance because we really need to take some time to sort through that. And as you said earlier, it might go in the budget. Yeah, so I'm just I would I agree with you, Senator Lyons. I'd put a period after you and then be done with it. And then we'd work with the probes on the language or something like, you know, I'm looking to Senators Hooker and, and Perchlick who were on the committee. Does that make sense to the two of you? The very last sentence. I think I think that leaves it open so that we can do further you know, yeah. with the probes and so. Come. I mean, it's not as though Senator Cummings and that team down there. I mean, we've been in contact. It's not as though they're going to say, "Wait, where's that sentence?" You know, they're not going to say, "We well, we better not ask them." You know, I I think this has been a fluid conversation. I want to get them something. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jim, that makes sense. It does. Um, I have a question going back to uh, Senator Perslick's proposal. Uh, I get the um, uh, one to five, 25,000, 60, 25, 50,000, but Great. is it per school or is it per school district? I thought about it, but I think school district, because that's where who's getting the money. Right. So I would do school district. You could, you could, do it either way. I mean, you could, I, I started going to go to school district, but you can make the payment based upon number of EOL at each school within the school district if you want. So you can still pay the school district either way. Um, yeah, I guess I don't, I haven't thought about it enough. And I guess if we, if we, if we say we're going to vote it on Tuesday, maybe people will, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'll focus people's we're attention. We're watching us. Yeah. Thinking. Yeah. For the next draft, would you prefer keeping districts, school districts, or school? Yeah. I personally, yes, but I'm looking to to others. Yeah, personally, I, I like that, and that'll give everyone an opportunity to uh, to weigh in before Tuesday before we vote. Okay. And Daphne, if you would put on the calendar for Tuesday, um, committee vote on uh, memo to Senate Finance. Got that. Will do. Thank you. And yeah, Senator Percher. And will Jim or Daphne email the, the, the slightly altered one this afternoon just so we could yep. maybe send it to some folks the weekend before Tuesday? Right. Yep, I'll do it right, right when we're done. Yep. And uh, Daphne, if you would also, yeah, post it. Um, yeah, and email it to all of us so that we can just forward it around to folks after Jim makes those additional changes. Uh, Jim, could you also just put a little space? Be at the top recommendation between recommendation and our committee. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. And maybe move over, you know, I so. Okay, great. Anything else on this before we shift to Brad James? Okay, Mr. Uh, and Jim, we're going to see you in just a little bit on 219. Okay. okay great. Mr. James. We're back. We're back. Again, Brad James, Agency of Education. Um, so I, I updated it with, with how we discussed it. I left, I actually had put numbers on the very top and did not extend yeah. that one. So I can't go one, two, three, four, five, but I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five anyway. Column one is still the FY20 ELL count, so that's no change. Column two now is the FY20 tax rate, which is what uh, was being asked for. So that's where basically people were in FY20. And then 
I lost the R and estimated rate in column three. There's an R, supposed to be an R there. I'm sure it's a white font, so you can't read it. Um, but column three is the, the tax rates that come from using all the weights plus the ELL weight of, of uh, 2.49. And those are subtracted from the FY20 rate. So if we're using Addison Central as the first example, because it's on the first line, their FY20 rate was 1.618. And using the, their rate under the, using all weights goes up just over six cents. All right, so that, that's how we're reading this. Column one, two, three, four now is the ELL grant, or pardon, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize, the ELL weight, but with a, with a grant of $25,000 for those districts that have less than few, 25 or fewer. And then column five, the last column is uh, the same thing, the change in tax rates if they had 25 or fewer, but at a $50,000 grant. So I, I also highlighted the, the negatives in yellow just because I figured it was gonna be easier to see, to differentiate because it gets confusing to me as you look down through these at times. So I'm just going through I, these. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's take a minute. Mm -hmm. Where is, South, where is uh, Southwest Supervisory Union? Southwest Supervisory Union would be Bennington's. So they'd be right up at the top. Yeah. These are, these are sorted by county and then alphabetically by district. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong thing, sorry. Uh, okay. So yeah, so I mean, you're, you're, you're seeing Southwest Vermont Uni Unified or Union Elementary School District is, is a few down, like maybe 10 down. I should have put numbers. No, these, these aren't by county, are they? Yes, they are. So I'm, so I'm sorry, I'm looking at then, the document I'm looking at says Addison Central Okay, got it. Now I see it. Thank you. Got it. It probably helps to put darker lines between the counties. Up. No, 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 no. This is no. This I'm. Is... I'm just. I always think about these things after the fact. So it's really interesting. Committee questions. This is a little bit more in talking with Senator Hardy. What I ex kind of expected to see. I think so. Yeah, um, this is really yeah. helpful. Go ahead, Senator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Senator Easton. Terrence Zini's not with us, but I think this is what he was looking for too the other day. Okay. When he was there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, uh, this will be sorted out in really in finance, but um, yeah, uh, Senator or uh, Mr. James, anything else? Um, I, I, I did do something for at, at Senator Hooker's request, just a quick uh, second thing on the what the tax rate impact would be. It's a very simple chart. Um, it's the second one. I don't have my file up to see what it's called on, on your website, but it says probably some effect of tax rate or tax rate impact or something like that. Um, it's just a simple chart. Like Tell me what is happening in Rutland Town since I'm going to be asked. Uh, down? Let me jump down. Yeah. A friend of mine lives there and I think uh, he may have a question or two. They, they go up. I just checked them. Yep, they, they go up, they go up, they go yeah. up 20 cents and they, yeah. they have no ELL kids. So they're 20 cents across the board there. There's kind of a, a neat incentive here to have a multicultural environment. <laughs> True. <laughs> so another friend of mine uh, lives in North Bennington. Uh, let's go to North Bennington for That's a second. For, for first page about seven or eight down. Yep. Yeah, and again, so they have they, they have they have one ELL child, so they 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 go up nine nine and a half cents almost um, from in, and then they start dropping, and again they they drop to seven point eight cents at twenty five thousand and six point one cent increase at fifty thousand. Okay, 
And again, there are, there are lots of other factors in the background besides ELL that are that are making these tax. Oh, ab ab absolutely, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, you have any friends that live in Norwich that are camping? I do. I'm in Rutland. <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> Now that's really the limit of my friends uh, <laughs> to Rutland Town. And <laughs> no offense to anybody here, but uh, yeah. Um, okay, this is very helpful. Okay, and, the, and it, it kind of gives me a look into what April is going to be on the Senate floor as well. Uh, it's you know there's there's a ways to go on this, and it's it's not going to be without its challenges, uh, and it's. Uh, yeah, Senator Perchlick. Well, Mr. James is going over the second attachment to his email. We don't have it on yes. our website yet, but the email. Well, we do. It's, it's, it is there. I just looked. It's, it's called Rate Change Impacts. Oh, okay. it, it's there. Okay, great. Sorry. So those are just, I guess it says that. Those are dollars. Those, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't like dollar signs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm just making <laughs> they sure. Yeah. it all up. Um, so, yes, the, the, these are all dollars. Um, and basically what I did is I, is I, I just listed homestead values starting at $200,000 and increased by $50,000. It's down to $850,000 for your, you know, how far do you want to go? And then I looked at the first four columns are rate increases. The second four columns are rate decreases. And I went by a penny, by five cents, by 10 cents, and by 20 cents. Just, I mean, I just picking numbers, people can kind of um, extrapolate. But again, as I said, one penny raises $10 per $100,000 home value. Uh, because we tax on per hundred, so um, so that's just basically what you're seeing. You know, you're seeing that you know it's. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it seems pretty explanatory to me. So, but it, 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 I, it's I Senator Hooker. Is this what you were thinking of? Something like this. So I mean, again, when you compare that to this one, you can get a rough idea of what's going to happen with individual taxpayers. You know. Yeah. Oh, when you compare it to the the second sheet. Yeah, to the yes, to the to the the change the change in tax rates here proposal. Yeah. You know, S, obviously these are estimates. These are FY twenty numbers. Right. And then looking at this, just seeing what's happening, it kind of gives you a rough idea of how it actually impacts a taxpayer, which I believe what Senator Hooker's real question was. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for doing that, Brad. No problem. Okay. Okay, anything else at this point? Mr. James, thanks so much for uh, all of your work on this this summer, as well as um, sticking with us up, you know, through this point. We really appreciate it. No, you're, you're welcome. It's, I, I actually like doing this. I wish I had more time to pay attention to it. Yeah, because it, I, enjoy, I actually enjoy this part. Well, I don't wanna speak for everyone else, but I think you're alone in that. In that, but, but I, maybe, I know that I'm I'm a little uh, out there. I get no. That. That's good. I think it's it, listen. <laughs> Somebody it, has it, to be. It, it's an important. It is an extremely important contribution to our state. So uh, I hope you realize that, uh, Senator Hooker. Just a, a clarification before you go, Brad. That all of these numbers are inclusive of all of the weights. This is, is we're correct. not yes. just talking about English language learners here. We're talking about poverty. We're talking about density. We're talking about sparsity. We're talking about all of those things. Yes, we're we're talking about all the weights the task force recommended, which came from Professor Colby's October twenty eighth memo. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're looking at right here. So it's all the all the weights that were recommended. Great. Thank you. Senator Campion? Yeah, please. And the, I know you, when you testified at the task force, you often gave all the caveats of obviously these numbers are going to change because the pupils will change and what the budgets the school pass will change. So this is just to give us an idea what actually will happen, whatever, in two years when this would go into effect could be very different. It, it, it could be and it will be very different because by then these numbers will be four years old. Um, yeah, so, you know, nobody should think that this is what's going to happen, but this, what this is doing is hopefully giving us some idea of what could happen based on what we know from at this point, two years ago. And, and this is not what is going to happen in FY20, it's all, or 24, I guess it's, it's all going to change. You know, this might show general trends, but I, but, you know, we're projected two years out, who knows? Okay. 
committee, anything else at this point? Great. We'll put this up for a vote on uh, Tuesday. Thanks, Brad. You're very welcome. Really great to see you. Good to see you all too. And have a great weekend. Thanks, you too.